Hi, welcome back. This next section is on how to design courses in Udemy for academic credit. City Vision is one of the first schools that has offered um, a course that's on Udemy that is both free on Udemy and it's available as um, a, a version if you decide to pay the tuition um, with, with City Vision to get academic credit. Um, we do this because we want our courses to be as widely available as possible. Um, what we're really trying to do, I, as I mentioned, I am a MIT graduate and co-founded a research group there. MIT has really been a pioneer in this space, and we're trying to replicate that model, but to make it more accessible to the masses. So MIT um, was one of the first programs to combine MOOCs with credit, and they did this with their um, edX MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management. And this is really the model that they developed, is they had 243,000 free edX non-credit MOOC participants. Then out of those, 1,900 became certificate students. So they paid $1,350 to become a certificate student and 622 completed. And then they got a small set that actually came to campus at MIT um, to, do, to do the degree. So we're trying to do the same type of thing, but working with, with Udemy. So we're, we have free MOOC students in Udemy. Um, We'll probably have about 10,000 pretty soon. And then we have um, an accredited instance of the Udemy course in our learning management system. We use Populi. Um, so students who are in Udemy, they're not getting credit. So if you're taking this, you're not just getting credit from, from Udemy, but you could sign up and, and then um, take the accredited, accredited instance of Udemy in our, our LMS. And I, I'm trying to use this as a model if other schools wanna impl implement this. Um, and then you can um, complete a certificate program of four courses and then potentially go on to our degree program. So if you are a Udemy course designer um, or if you are an accredited institution and you would like to have a Udemy course that's um, offered with your accredited program, um, here's how you can do it. So you design so that the accredited version is as similar as possible to the Udemy version. So view the Udemy course as what people call courseware. Um, and you assign it in your accredited course almost like you would assign an external book um, in your learning management system. A lot of schools will work with courseware um, from uh, you know different vendors, uh, courseware vendors out there. So it's, it's very similar. Um, so you try to design your Udemy course with the same number of sections as you have weeks in your LMS course. So we have eight week courses. We created eight week Udemy sections um, and you have one Udemy section per week. Um, for each weekly design, um, you assign the Udemy section for that week as required materials. Um, you mirror the Udemy assignments in the LMS for each, each week. Um, so that you can enter the grades in the LMS with comments or links to comments. Um, this type of design is going to work best if your assessments are project-based. Um, given how Udemy works, you can see how we use Google Classroom in this um, in parallel because Udemy doesn't provide very advanced features for submitting assignments, but we especially use Google Classroom because uh, it has awesome templating functions of creating templates for students. And honestly, that's the biggest value you're going to get out of this course is, is the templates. And then you can use peer response assignments um, rather than forums since Udemy doesn't support forums. Um, so if you're an accredited institution um, and, you know, if you try to tell your accreditor you're providing a MOOC, they're not going to know how to handle that. So what you do is you submit your courses or if someone looks at them, um, and you just explain that the Udemy instance of your course is courseware. Um, and lots of schools will use courseware like Pearson or McGraw-Hill. So accreditors and government regulators have a framework for handling courseware. Um, you know, one of the issues is around timing. Um, some institutions will allow people to start and stop a course anytime, but most don't. So Udemy allows students to, to start the course at any time. Um, but ultimately if you have an accredited course students taking that accredited course would have to take it during the start and stop time that your accreditation and, and your offering allows you um, now if you have government aid especially in the u.s um, federal aid will not allow 
um, self-paced courses. So to address this, what you have to do is, you know, students can take the entire, um, go through the entire material in Udemy, but once they get into your federal aid um, course, you have to roll out only one week at a time so that students can submit assignments for each week. That's part of current regulations in the U.S. require submission of weekly assignments. Um, if you allow competency-based or you have self-paced courses, then someone could potentially just submit all their assignments at once in, in your learning management system. Um, so, you know, assuming you're at a non-accredited institution, and I imagine most of the people taking this course will be um, non-accredited, what you need to do is you need to design your course so it looks like an accredited course. So have a syllabus, um, have hours, you know, meet hours requirements. So in the U.S., there's something called the Carnegie Hour, which is 45 hours of activity per credit hour, um, which generally amounts in, you know, an in-person class, that's 45 hours of uh, in-class time and 90 hours of out-of-class time doing assignments or, you know, studying. Um, in, in Europe, which is a standard that's used uh, widely, pretty widely beyond Europe also, um, ECTS, um, one credit typically equals 25 to 30 hours of work. Um, it can also be helpful to design your course to be project-based or portfolio-based. This isn't required, but especially if you work with a school that is going to take a student through a prior learning portfolio process, if your course final project is basically a, a portfolio um, that they could just plug into a portfolio process, that's going to make things easier for them. Um, the alternative is to work with um, institutions where they will do something called um, articulate for credit, but they have to do an evaluation, kind of like a, a little mini review of like what an accreditor would do. And the name of the game is you need to look like other things. Um, so, you know, even if your course is different than a little bit different than a standard course name, try to use a standard course name, try to use um, things that are standard course outcomes so that, um, you know, you're, you're not providing a course in basket weaving and trying to grant credit for it because um, that isn't typically what accredited institutions provide. So, um, and then you can seek out partners that will provide articulation agreements for your credit. Another option is to actually seek, um, if you're in the U.S., it's ACE credit recommendations. There's also um, in a lot of parts of the world, you can seek partners um, uh, that that will validate your credit. Um, so if you're working with vocational qualifications, um, that would be the equivalent of seeking out a vocational qualifications provider that would validate your credit. Um, in the U.S., there's other groups like NCCRS, CLEP, AP, and other credit exams um, that you could use. And then you'd have to align your your course with one of those exams if you decided to pursue that option. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next session.